Hello everyone and welcome to DC Central and in today's video we're going to be breaking down and reviewing The Flash Season 6 Episode 13 otherwise entitled Grod Friended Me and if you have not seen this episode make sure you go and do so before proceeding with this review as it will be filled with spoilers. So we are back reviewing The Flash and obviously this review is kind of a week late but luckily it's okay because The Flash is on break this week so it actually works out quite well uh, so I can have a review for you guys this week. Um, so this episode was a anticipated one going into it we knew that Grodd was obviously going to be returning and was going to play a role within this episode to what extent we didn't quite know but we were pretty excited to see how it was going to go out and for me personally I actually really had a great time with this episode and this might be one of my favorites of the season. I have to say the opening scene of this was really cool where you have Barry, you know, zipping around the city trying to find his mum and dad's grave and the fact that it's no longer there, I think it's interesting because it does bring up the question of, you know, what has crisis changed even to the smallest degree, like what's going on, obviously we've had all these world changing, character changing things going on in the world, but what are even like the small things that crisis has changed and we got to see that in this episode, like these little effects and what I really like is that, you know, even in the, in the build up to crisis, you know, they were saying that crisis will have effects when it's done you know it will feel its presence even after it's happened and i like the fact that we are actually getting that this isn't a thing where you know it happened like most crossovers and then that's it and it's done it's never brought up again what i like about crisis is that particularly on the flash it's you know really been seeded in the show and we're really seeing the effects of it same on supergirl and i believe the same on batwoman i don't watch batwoman myself but um from what i've heard it's also doing the same thing legends has basically forgotten about it but i wouldn't really expect that from legends but you know particularly here on the flash i really like how we're seeing these really small little effects of crisis that you know even though they may not be these world changing or character changing things that we are seeing from other things i like the fact that we still get to see these little effects that you know show that crisis had an effect literally on every little aspect of the world, not just the big things. So how does Grodd come into this episode? Well, essentially Barry gets trapped into Grodd's mindscape. And this was really cool to me. I like the fact that this is how they used Grodd because Grodd post-crisis is kind of, he's kind of a changed man or a changed gorilla, shall we say. Uh, he's not quite the same as he was. He's not really focused on world domination or trying to cause unrest and cause, you know, these big, conflicts in Central City. That's not really what he's trying to do. Grodd is a lot more focused on just trying to get home and trying to live his normal life because post-crisis he now knows that you know all the Earths have merged and what we now know is that Gorilla City which obviously was on Earth 2 is actually now on Earth Prime. So this is really interesting. So uh, Gorilla City now actually exists in the same universe as everything else which is really cool um so he basically just wants to return to gorilla city so he can be with his kind and just live out the rest of his life there uh, but he's still stuck in argus custody so he's trying to get barry's help to try and uh allow him to escape this mindscape and defeat the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper is solovar now solovar was the sort of evil gorilla who we met in the gorilla city storyline back in season three uh he actually returns in this episode and we get to see some cool fights and stuff like that and this storyline was really cool because it was a really intelligent way of bringing back grod without making this massive cgi thing like we got with the gorilla city two-parter like this is like a much smaller scale uh, idea but a lot more personal and a lot more interestingly written in my opinion i really like the fact that barry and grod actually got to bond throughout this because at first barry doesn't trust him but then he kind of realizes that grod has changed post crisis and crisis has changed him and i like the fact that they have able to kind of bond together and have this kind of moment because it's really cool when heroes and villains team up we get it quite a lot on the flash and i think that you know him teaming up with grod is something i didn't think we'd really see and given the fact that we actually had to fight grod last season and we had to use king shark to do it i didn't think we were actually going to get a barry and grod kind of team up but we actually get it here and it's really cool and it's done in a way that i didn't expect and bringing back solovar made a lot of sense solovar was a pretty cool villain and i thought it was really cool to bring him back and make him kind of the you know anti grod you know which he basically is uh, the reverse grod if you will it makes a lot of sense so i really liked all that stuff and what was really great about this is when we actually get to see barry and grod merge we get to see a speedster grod uh this was insane i never thought we'd see this i never thought you know this is something i never even dreamed or thought of i don't know if this exists in the comics anywhere but i've never thought we'd ever conceivably see a speedster gorilla but we get it in this uh barry and grod merge their minds to become one being within this mindscape to defeat uh solovar and that was really cool it just again it's something you'd never even think of but it's one of those super comic booky things that just 
you know, you, you don't think it's going to work, and then it just does. And it's really cool and really exciting. It was fun to see, you know. It's just one of those things that you look at it and you go, yes, it's absolutely ridiculous, but... It's a really cool idea, and it's fun to see on screen. So I really liked all this stuff with Barry and the Mindscape with Grodd. It was really cool, and again, a really intelligent way of bringing back Grodd without making this big CGI storyline that usually Grodd is involved in. Now, Iris is still trapped in the mirror world with Eva McCulloch. Now, I've not really spoken about Eva because I haven't reviewed the episodes in the back half of the season so far. Uh, but Eva, I think, is a really cool character. I really like her so far. She seems very interesting. I like her ulterior motive. She seems to have a lot more going on behind her eyes than what, you know, she may seem. I think Eva's really cool. I think it's very obvious that she is going to become a villain later on in the season, possibly, you know, the new version of the Mirror Master, I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to see here, uh, but really cool in this Mirror World, and I like the fact that obviously by the end of this, you know, Iris isn't as big in this episode as she has been in the last couple of episodes, so the Mirror Dimension is a bit less of a focus here, uh, but we do see that, you know, basically Eva is somehow controlling and is somehow connected to this other world, Iris, that is out in the real world, as she puts her hands through the mirror, it burns her, and when it does that, uh, the iris in the real world is actually getting burnt as well. Um, they haven't really explained what's going on with this version of iris and who she is and what she is. We don't really know what's going on with that yet, so this was just another little hint that she seems to be connected to Eva in some way, shape, or form. We just don't know to what extent that is. We don't know if this is like another version of Eva that she is able to kind of send out there as like a reflection or what's going on. We don't quite know, uh, but something is going on and I did enjoy the intrigue and I'm really enjoying the storyline with Iris and Eva in this mirror dimension. It's great to see Iris really getting this forefront storyline. I'm really happy about it. Iris, I think, is such an underrated character on the show. So to see her really get this great storyline, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm excited to see where it's going to go in the next few episodes. And we finally got some development with Nash and Allegra. I was really happy to see this because this is something that they've been teasing for the last couple of episodes. And it's something that I've been waiting for them to delve into. And it's really great. Obviously, we kind of know that Allegra on Nash's Earth, whatever Earth he was from, was his daughter or at least some kind of close relation. He doesn't quite say what the relation is in this. It's inferred that it's his daughter or at least maybe even like an adopted daughter. But they don't actually say, he keeps saying, you know, it's a close companion or something like that. Um, but with this, we actually get a bit more development. Allegra is just like, you know, why are you being so weird? Why are you being so, you know, kind of protective and just over the, over the, overbearing for me? Why are you being like this? And it, it kind of results in, you know, Killer Frost essentially giving Nash the advice that, you know, you just need to talk to her. And I think it is really cool to actually have this kind of thing that, again, an effect from Crisis where all the Earths are now gone and Nash is now not from Earth Prime, but he's trapped on this Earth, essentially. Um, which does beg the question, you know, will we ever see another version of Wells? It's a kind of recurring joke on The Flash, you know, each season we get a new Wells. Are we ever going to see another version of Wells, or are we just stuck with Nash now until the end of the, you know, as far as the show goes? Uh, I think that's pretty interesting, but the fact that he has, the, like, this estranged daughter who he now meets on Earth Prime... It's very interesting, so, you know, I can't wait to see how they actually go with this and how Allegra takes to it, because it could be a really great thing for her character, because Allegra, I've liked her so far on the season, I think she's fun, uh, but she hasn't had anything, you know, particularly investing about her character yet, so I think that giving her this kind of storyline and connecting to, her, to a character like Nash, I think could be a great move for her character, and also for Nash as well, given the fact that the whole, you know, crisis pariah thing has kind of gone to bed. And we did get a really nice scene at the end of the episode between Barry and Chester P. Runk. We do have Chester come back in this episode, and he basically helps Barry um, find the graveyard that his parents are now at. And it was kind of nice, because obviously it, that's kind of his arc within this, is that he's kind of a fanboy of the Flash. He gets to meet him in this episode, he gets to help out, and we actually get to see him really take up the mantle of the guy in the chair in this episode. And this kind of links into, uh, this point was just going to be a pretty breezy one, but funnily enough, in uh, yesterday we actually got the news that uh, the actor who plays Chester P. Runk um, is act uh, Brandon McKnight. He has actually been upgraded to a series regular for season 7. So I think that this actually gives even more depth to this scene because we actually see that this development with Barry isn't just pointless side development. This is actually going to be a character who's going to really step up in the next season. And also given the fact that he, you know, by the end of this episode is told by Barry, you know, get on the computers, help me out. 
almost becoming Cisco's role. I think this does add more weight to the theory that has sprung up over the last day or so, which is that Carlos Valdez is leaving the show. I mean, obviously, I know we've been through this before. We went through this last season. There was the big rumor that Carlos was leaving the show. Cisco was leaving, stuff like that. And obviously, that never happened. Uh, maybe that got pushed back to this season. And we're going to see Cisco leave at the end of this season. And Chester is going to be his replacement. Because at the end of the day, it does make a lot of sense, given the fact that Chester is such a similar character. And again, given what happens in this episode with him, you know, kind of stepping up to become basically the same character as Cisco, like the same function function as him, it makes a lot of sense to kind of up him to a regular if Cisco wants to move on. So I think that there is a chance. At the same time, the Flash and the CW shows as a whole, they do have large casts of many series regulars. Like a lot of people don't actually remember, but Danielle Nicolet, who plays uh, Cecile, she's actually a series regular. So you know, and she's not exactly a character who's in the forefront every single week, so it's kind of like, and even Hartley Sawyer, who plays Ralph, like, Ralph isn't exactly in the forefront every week either, so, you know, it could just be a thing that they just want to have him on the show consistently, but it's just the fact that his character is so similar to Cisco that it does make it feel like they are setting up for a potential departure, and he's going to be the replacement, and again, given what happens in this episode with him and Barry, it just kind of makes sense to put him in that position, so he could be replacing Cisco, he might not be, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, this episode does end with a real humdinger of a uh, cliffhanger because we do see Nash. This entire episode, he's been dealing with, you know, and in the last couple of episodes, he's been dealing with these other versions of Wells just appearing in front of him. Like, we saw Harry a couple weeks ago, and in this episode, we kept seeing Sherlock. And at the very end of this episode, he's going back to find Allegra, and he actually gets attacked by uh, the Sherlock Wells that he sees appear in front of him. And this version of Sherlock Wells, his eyes start to glow red and his hand vibrates just like Thorn. Uh, and he says he's coming. So, obviously, this kind of could be a couple of things. This could just be a hint that Reverse Flash is coming back in some way and he's somehow connected to Nash. Because, obviously, there's going to be some way that Thorn managed to escape Crisis. There's going to be some way that happened. Um, so, we're going to have to see Reverse Flash again at some point. Uh, but it just depends on what this actually is. There is the potential that this is a setup for next week's episode. We do know next week's episode that Wally's coming back. And with that, uh, Barry and Wally are going to be working together to uh, fix the Speed Force and to tackle one of the Flash's biggest enemies. So this could be a tease for the Reverse Flash coming back next week um, to fight Kid, uh, Flash and Kid Flash. That could happen. Or this could be a bigger thing that's going to happen either for the end of the season or more likely maybe the next season. Because I do feel like uh, there's way too much going on in, the, in this back half of the season to throw in reverse flash. Like that's a big thing to throw in. And also that would feel very similar to what happened last season where we had this big thing with Cicada. And then reverse flash came in at the end of the season. It, it'd feel too similar to me. So I feel like this could be a thing for next week's episode. Um, and that would make a lot of sense. But then again, if that was the case... I find it strange that he's going after Nash and not Barry, because Nash seems to be not involved in that storyline whatsoever. So it's a very weird one. Again, it's these typical things on The Flash and these other shows where it's just one of those cliffhangers. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know what it means yet, but it could be really cool uh, if it comes off. So I'm very excited and interested to see where it's going to go. Overall, though, like I said at the beginning, I really liked this episode. I had a great time with it. It was really fun. Again, any episode where they bring in Grodd, whether it's on The Flash or when they brought him over to Legends of Tomorrow, it's just a really fun time to see Grodd, this big CGI gorilla, just stomping about, especially when you give him speeds to powers. That's a great time. And I really liked, again, the stuff with Iris, the continuation of that. What they do with Chester in this could be really interesting going forward into Season 7. And in particular, I really liked all the little changes with crisis and where they're going to go with nash i think it's just they do a lot of really good character work in this episode that i really enjoyed and what was nice about it as well is that the back half of the season has been very iris heavy which again i don't have a problem with because i love iris and i think that her storyline has been the most interesting thing about the season to be honest but what was nice about this episode is that this was very barry focused this was a very barry focused episode and barry hasn't really been the focus since the end of the mid-season so it's been really nice to kind of have an episode about him and it seems like next episode is going to be like that as well with wally coming back so that's really cool um so overall really strong episode for me i really enjoyed it again it's one of my favorites of the season so far and this is definitely one i can see myself re-watching and revisiting after time but what did you guys think about this episode? Make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you like it? Did you not? Whatever you thought about it, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, if you want to see more DC content and more content from shows like The Flash and Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow and everything else in between, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads from me. And I hope to see you guys again next time.